Welcome to Adventures in Life. I'm your host, Earl Beecher. Our guest is Adelena, and she is an educator, concert pianist, and composer. And uh, the music that you heard playing is a cut from a new CD that she is doing. It's called Crystal Waters. And Adelena, we're very happy to have you in the studio. Thank you so much for having me. I want to get your background. You made a special trip down here from Vancouver, British Columbia. Yes, I did. Because you're playing concerts. Yes. In churches. Yes. Uh, is there a church in particular you'd like to mention where you're playing concerts? Well, I love playing in uh, Catholic and Presbyterian churches. Uh, they have a great love and appreciation for classical music as well as sacred classical music, and I love, I love both. Uh, we can do a lot of uh, Mozart, Beethoven, Liszt, and also my own scripturally based compositions there. They deeply appreciate um, the classics. Now, isn't Crystal Waters the one that's based on Revelations 22? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So it's, it's got a scriptural base. Yes, it certainly does. And <clears throat> when we are, um, we use this music for many different occasions. It, uh, it reveals the explanation in the Bible about what people can expect when they do go to heaven. It's very clearly stated in Revelation 21 and 22, uh, the crystal rivers, um, the pearly gates, the golden roads that will be waiting for us one day there. And when we go to rest homes and hospitals or play at funerals, it's very, very uh, uplifting to the people to realize that there is a scriptural description. And through music, this is what I have strived to describe to give them a little flavor of what is stated in the Bible. Now, I know that you do work with children. Yes. And I want to explore that at greater length yes. later in the show. Okay. But I'd like to get more of your background. You're originally born in Canada. Yes. But from Hungary. How, how, how does that work? Yes. Well, I was born on Vancouver Island. Both of my parents are from Hungary. They came out during the Hungarian Revolution in uh, 1956 through a series of many miracles they were able to be here. And um, my grandmother had come out with my uncle. She had contacted the Red Cross and through a whole series of events was able to bring out her family to Canada. I was very lucky to grow up in Canada. There were many opportunities given to me. The government uh, supported me with, me with many scholarships to study, at the, to go back to Hungary and study at the List Academy. So- well, well, wait a minute, I want to get that straight. Yes. You went back to Hungary- I did. To study. Yes. Yes. At the List Academy? Yes, yes. Oh, tell me about that. Yes, knock on wood, thank goodness. Um, I, was, I was very much a very dedicated uh, piano disciple. I loved to play the piano all day and night, and uh, you didn't have to tell me to practice for some reason. And my father was also a pianist, my mother was a, an operatic singer, and my grandmothers, both of my grandmothers sang and grew up in the Catholic Church being singers. Um, I was... Uh, deeply grateful to have a grand piano and to practice. And uh, at one point, my father had mentioned to me, wouldn't you just, you love the music of Liszt. Wouldn't you love to study uh, at the Liszt Academy in Budapest, Hungary? Wow. So uh, I said, yes. So we prepared a tape. And I was only 16 at the time, but I played a lot of Liszt, a lot of Liszt Rhapsodies and uh, very hard, difficult technical pieces. We thought we'd give it a try uh, without really expecting anything. Um, because there were 52 other applicants and they were only going to choose one for that year. So I was a very hard worker, very dedicated because I loved classical music so much. And um, I wasn't good at anything else, but I was good at that was the only thing I was good at as a teenager. That's all you need That's if you've got classical <laughs> music. Yes. So I couldn't do the other things. I didn't <laughs> go to proms or parties or I didn't go to, you know, grad ceremonies. I just, everything was music and concerts and competitions for the love of it, not for the elitism of it or the, you know, mm -hmm. it was truly a genuine appreciation of it. So to make a long story short, we sent off the tape to Budapest, Hungary, not expecting a reply so soon. I wanted to go much later, but they, they sent me a telegram that I was accepted immediately and to go immediately. So I was stunned. I, I remember the moment I received it personally. I couldn't believe it. I was overwhelmed with joy because I really love the music of Franz Liszt. Now, your parents came out from the revolution. Yes. When you went back, what was the political situation? Well, they were still under the communist regime. That's what I was wondering. It was a very sorrowful thing for me to see 
coming from such a free, rich country as Canada, uh, to see all the hindrances and the difficult limitations people had to live under. It broke my heart. I went to villages and cities, and I, I saw things that I, I, you know, you had to stand in line for milk or bread for hours. Uh, little old ladies would be, you know, pestered or, or um, not treated with dignity. Uh, but this was a long time ago. Things have changed since then, thank God. Um, and it, for me, it was quite an experience. And I remember uh, thinking, as much as I love Budapest and all the wonderful culture and the, the churches, the architecture, the music, the luscious music of Bartók and Kodai and Liszt, I, w I felt myself to be so grateful that we had the opportunity to live and grow up in Canada. I just was thanking my lucky stars every day, thinking, my God, we could have been here. Uh, my parents barely made it out to Canada, and how, how difficult it would have been as an artist uh, and just as a human being to live there. So um, uh, I love my, my parents' homeland very much, and I'm very much a great advocate and performer of Franz Liszt's and Bartók's music, and uh, strive to write music that perhaps has little tiny glimmers um, in a humble way of their uh, wonderful, audacious style. Now, you've written something honoring Liszt, haven't yes, you? Yes, yes, I have. And you played it in a concert recently? Yes, I did. And you brought in some footage? I certainly did, yes. I, I would like very much to insert that footage so that we could share it with our, yes, our viewers. that would be lovely. Thank you. May we do that now, certainly. please? Certainly, yes. Sh
Oh, that was lovely. Thank you. And now, where were you playing that? I heard an audience. Yes, I was playing it um, for the Hungarian community in Vancouver, BC, at the Tom Lee Piano Theater. And um, my students were there and a lot of other people from various other ethnic communities. And it you was included that one in, in the new CD. Yes, I have. This is my all-time favorite one. Um, it's entitled Garden of Gethsemane, Celebration of Life, a tribute to the music of Franz Liszt. Uh, Franz Liszt, as many people know, did write some scripturally based music. And um, even though some of it is not as famous as the others, they're very, very lovely. Um, such as Sancta Dorothea, which will be coming up in a moment. Um, Franz Liszt decided to enter the priesthood late in life. And uh, I can very much relate to um, many of the things that he went through. And uh, I, I sort of combined Liszt and the scriptural perspective. Now, I want to be sure I understood this. You wrote this yes, yourself. Yes, I wrote it all myself. To yes. honor Liszt. Yes, I did, yes. And it's called? Garden of Gethsemane. I wrote it on Good Friday. Thank you. Oh, you did? I did write it on Good Friday. I was alone in a church one day, and I just felt the magic there that day. And the grand piano was there. And I often wondered um, how difficult it must have been uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane uh, for Jesus before he was crucified and what he went through on an emotional level. A lot of people don't think of that and don't realize. Now, you're going to play something else for us now. Yes. Uh, Santa... Santa Dorothea. It's uh, The Legend of St. Dorothy, written by Franz Liszt. It was written by Liszt. This was, lit this was written by Franz Liszt, and she lived in the 4th century, and uh, it's entitled Gift from God. Let's pause and listen to Let's that listen one Let's listen to it. I love this piece of his. It's one of my favorites. I rearranged it for piano and flute. Is somebody playing the flute on it? Yes. Uh, my colleague, concert flautist, Justine Bleek. Hi, I'm Pierce Brosnan. Recently, I had the great privilege of working with Day of the Child. This is an organization that involves themselves in children, children in foster homes. And what it entails is spending two days of each month with a foster child. Call us at 310-203-0500. Thank 
you very much. Our guest is Adelena, and she is an educator as well as an accomplished pianist and composer. Uh, who, who was that playing the flute again? Justine Bleek, a concert flautist from Vancouver, BC. There is something so genteel when you hear a piano and flute together. It's, true. it's, it's really true. It's a different mood. It's it really is. It's, it's just a very <clears throat> lovely. One of my major concerns is that they have been taking music out of the school. Yes, mine too. I'm upset about it. Yes, me that's too. That's why I get on it. Yes. Okay. You are teaching children classical music. Tell me about it. Yes, I'd love to. Um, I have the joy and privilege of teaching music appreciation classes, uh, piano classes, small choir classes, individual and group classes. And it never ceases to amaze me how receptive children are to classical music if we sh show them the right way, um, if we make it palatable for them. When I say classical music, I mean light classics. Uh, Mozart, Chopin, Schubert, the Strauss waltzes. Um, I love the heavy classics, too. I do, but that <laughs> comes a little later. It's just okay. like feeding a little baby You're, milk. What age group are you talking to? I'm talking about 5 to 17. And this, this is a very vulnerable time for children. Um, they need to be exposed to mu classical music as a foundation, as a, an, an essential must in their lives. Whatever other uh, music they listen to, classical music must be incorporated in and, that. And so now, I know you are coming up uh, a new CD yes. called... Pony Prancer's Birthday Party, an Introduction to the Light Classics. Pony Prancer's? Pony Prancer's Birthday Party. Oh, you've got a toy here. I do, <laughs> I do. We use any kind of a healthy, wholesome gimmick for children to... Uh, enjoy, understand, and appreciate the music better. We have uh, Bach, Gounod's Ave Mar Maria, Jules Massenet's Meditation, Mozart's Sonata. Mozart's Sonata? Yes. That's pretty heavy. And it's actually a rearranged for piano with flute. And the children love the flute to make it more palatable. Yes. And also Dvorak's New World Symphony that everybody loves. Oh, yes. And even if the parents are not familiar with classical music, they should present it to their children. It's just like buying vitamins or healthy nourishment for their children um, on a daily basis or on a, uh, on a yearly basis, whatever. I'd like to hear a little something from Pony Prance. Yes, yes. And this particular one is actually my own composition and is especially written for children. Uh, serotonin, erin endorphin producing music. Oh, well. It's for children who are healthy. It's for children who are unhealthy. It's just happy, happy music that helps them to dance. And feel the joy of music. That, that has a lovely mood. Thank you so much. What was the title? Pony Prancer's Birthday Party. Oh, it's the title tune yes. from the CD. Yes, that, yes. I see. And you have one also with a Latin feel, and then the Mozart Sonata. Yes. All done on piano in a simplified version. Yes. So the children. Yes are getting, I, I think that we've got to get music back into the school. Yes, we certainly do. It's very important for children. It makes them, many educators, uh, doctors, and teachers would agree that classical music infuses balance and peacefulness into children. Well, and not only that, it's the backbone for everything that has, has come out. Yes, exactly, yes, and int intellectuality, uh, their mathematical sense, their sense for system and counting and rhythm. It enhances uh, their intellect as well as their souls. Mm. That's the Caribbean Carnival, and there's a story before it. Well, you can tell it in a minute. Yes. And Pony Prancer goes to the Caribbean, and they're doing a little dance with the family, a Caribbean dance. <laughs> the kids love this. They really do. And it makes them all feel like dancing. Those shoes are almost on the beat. Yes.
you know, you you have to bring fun into it. Yes. With the children. Yes. So that they get the feel, and like you, want to learn. They love the instrument. Yes. When you were playing, I noticed the hand position, the list technique. I want to know a little bit more about that. Yes. Well, I was fortunate enough to study with uh, teachers who were students of students at Franz Liszt. Mr. Bela Shiki from the University of Washington, I had studied there two years uh, with him, and uh, he introduced me to the list technique at a very early age, how to accomplish that finesse um, by relaxing the muscles and, and holding your hands a certain way to enable you to play the fast technical passages for the longest time. And not get carpal and not tunnels. Get, exactly, and, exactly. Right. The lightness they need the to finesse. teach the list technique even on the computer for that, some of these yes, folks. Yes, yes. What are we going to hear next? Um, next we are going to hear one of my own compositions that has been used for film music. It's entitled A Little Walk in Heaven. And uh, it's one of my favorite pieces. I also wrote lyrics to it as well. And I hope one day one of my favorite singers can sing it. It's for piano and flute. And I hate to interrupt it, but they tell us the time is running short. Adelina, thank you so much for coming and being the so guest. Much. Thank it's you so much. It's really a pleasure to have you, and I want to thank the crew. And I want to especially thank our viewers for joining us for Adventures in Life. And please join us soon again for more Adventures in Life.